Alright you guys, I decided to do a spoiler discussion on Curse of Chucky. So basically, let's start off with the title, Curse of Chucky. What is it that Chucky does throughout all of these movies that he's been, all these movies over the years? He curses like a sailor, doesn't he? So yeah, that little line, curse, yeah, that's what the little girl says in the movie. Stop cursing and all that stuff. So basically, he's cursing every time. No big whoop on that one because he does that for he's been doing that for 25 years. <laughs> so let's start off about how he got to the house because in the film he gets to the house, but it doesn't say how he gets to the house. Tiffany actually sends him to each address so he can handle all the business he has to handle before he moves on to the next target. So basically, Jennifer Tilly is used in the film to ship him to different areas that where he needs to go. Okay. So that part is also fixed or explained a little bit. But she also disguises him in makeup because, as you know, this is like an alternate, uh, not alternate timeline, but like this is like a little mishmash of Bride of Chucky. So basically, Chucky's already put together by the time Bride of Chucky is uh, started. But that, uh, that, Sheriff deputy at the at the beginning of Brian Chucky is with Chucky during the court at court, which I'll get to. But yeah, she puts like plastic paper mache on his face to cover up all the scars and stuff like that. So yeah, that face uh, that that new face he has is basically his old face but covered up. So I thought that was pretty interesting. But I don't like his fucked up face. I like that. I like this new face they had. It was awesome. They should have just kept it that way. But, you know, it is what it is. So, who is this family to Charles Lee Ray? Well, by the movie standards, he is a family. He was a family friend of not only their mother, the two girls' his mother. But also they're like the rest of their family back in the 80s, basically. 80s or 70s. And uh, he meets Daniel Bazzuti's character as a little girl. And says she has her mother's eyes, basically. Which comes into play later on in the movie. Uh, where he says that to her again, 25 years later. But at the same time, he, he, that her, their mom is pregnant with Nika. The girl in the movie in the wheelchair. And as it turns out... Charles Lee Ray was behind her being handicapped. At the same time, it was also her and her mother's fault that he became this doll in the first place. Because the night he paralyzes Nika and still in her mother's womb is the same night that the very first movie began. Because he's with this, this, this lady at the church. I don't know if they were having sex with her or if he was having sex with her or what. But he had her bound and gag. But somehow she managed to tell the police about it and the police finds them. He escapes only to be chased to the toy store where the original Child's Play takes place. Basically. And that's where he gets killed. Basically. And transfers his soul into that doll. So... I thought that was well incorporated in there. They, they they somehow managed to get the very beginning of the first movie, as well as the very beginning of the so-called fourth movie, in the same film. So that was pretty pretty cool, how they incorporated both of those little nuances there. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, so of course there, there's no Glenn and none of that bullshit. Tiffany is still a lady. She's not a doll. She'll never be a doll anymore. So that was cool. I thought that they, they erased the, they erased all that crap and made this alternate uh like a reboot of Bride of Chucky, if you will. But it's not really called Bride of Chucky, it's still Curse of Chucky, but they took they took the like the first five or ten minutes of Bride of Chucky and revamped it for Curse of Chucky. So that was very intuitive. Now, back to what I was saying about Daniel Bazzuti's character and how he said, uh, what was that line? That her eyes look just like her mother. Well, yeah, that was 
uh, he told her when she was a little girl before he stabs her in the eyeball, of course. So, yeah. The Chucky doll is a little bit, uh, sometimes a little bit CGI. Sometimes you can tell when it's, when it's panning, when the camera's panning down like the original Grand Theft Auto style where the camera panned down from the sky. You can tell that's a person, a little person in a suit, which I like. Because, you know, that they'll never get past that little person in a suit. That you, you got to have one of those in every time. So, I don't mind that part. And that little toy knife he had in the first movie is actually his calling card. Because that's what he uses to paralyze Nika when she's still in her mother's womb. With the little lightning bolt or thing on it. So, I thought that was pretty cool. They incorporated all that into this movie. Um, uh, what, what was else I was going to talk about? Oh! Stay tuned after the end credits. Why? Because I'll tell you why in a second. <laughs> yeah, I can pull a cock tease on you. But, I want to talk about the end of the film. Okay, so now the end of the film is basically like the end of Child's Play 1 to the beginning of Child's Play 2. Where Nika is basically blamed for those murders. And she's basically committed to a psychiatric medical or crazy house. If you will, just like Andy Barkley's mother. Since Andy Barkley, Barkley, the Tillies, and a couple of other families were mentioned at towards the end of this film that Chucky was been has been fucking around with over the course of these twenty five years, right? So yeah, she's off to the crazy house, and he's on the table as evidence. He's evidence D, and sitting across from him is the cop from Bride of Chucky. Not the same guy, but of course, but you know, it's the same guy from that movie. And he makes, he goes in the police car and he has Chuck in the evidence bag and he makes that same phone call, but except, instead of her picking it up, it goes to straight to a voice message. And he says, I'm on my way and don't forget my money. But Jennifer was already in the back, I mean, T Tiffany's already in the back seat of the car and she slashes his throat again, <laughs> basically, in the alternate. I keep saying alternate timeline. This ain't Robocop. And this rebooted, uh, rebooted first 10 minutes of that movie. And she looks in the back and says, Who's next? And she closes it back and then she ships him to, uh, Nika's sister's daughter's grandmother's house. That's a lot, of, that's a lot to say. Where he does that, he finally does that chant. That we all know and love from the Child's Play movie series. So he basically, um, I guess, tried to transfer his soul into her body. But the grandmother that he supposedly killed in the cellar re-woken re or whatever. So, the end credits is Chucky's final stop, of course. Who is his final stop? Andy Barkley's house. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And who is Andy Barkley in this film? No, it's not Justin Whalen. Take one more guess. You guessed it. If you guessed Alex Vincent, you're right. And my God, that boy has grown. That looks nothing like Alex Vincent from the first two films. I mean, he doesn't even have the same face. He just looks completely different. You know, the little goatee and everything. I'm like, oh my god, that's Alex Vincent? Shit. <laughs> so Tiffany ships him to Ch Alex Andy's house, of course. And Andy gets a phone call from his mom, who's been out of the uh, crazy house for a couple of years now. And she's going. he's going to go have dinner at her house tomorrow. And he says, well, what time should I be over there? And all that stuff. And Chucky's cutting himself out the box. And, of course... Elements from Child's Play 3 is in here too because you have the picture of the little award from him being in the military school as well as a picture of his girlfriend from Child's Play 3 and the picture of him and his mom from the first two films, of course. That's what Chucky looks at and then he turns around and Andy has a shotgun pointed directly at his face and he's like, play with, play with this. He just says, play with this and Chucky's like, Andy! And he goes, Loom. And it goes black. Awesome. Okay. I said it. 
in my thoughts video last November that Andy was going to be in this movie. I knew it had something to do with Andy. I knew it was going to wrap up with Andy somehow, in some way. And my God, it did not disappoint. This was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed Curse of Chucky. Just for that, all that it did, it just wrapped everything up in comparison. It's just nice. Very nice. And it took a very shitty sequel and brought a Chucky and revamped it into this movie. So, we won't have a Brada Chucky or a Cedar Chucky after this, once this movie's out. Well, well now, anyway. So, yeah. Drop your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about this movie, if you saw it yet. If you haven't seen it yet, I already have it linked onto the review. But I'll link it again for this uh, spoiler video for people who haven't seen it. Or I might put it somewhere over here in the screen somewhere. The same will be said for the first video. So yes, I am out.